Oh. What's up, Pat Sheridan? Mr. Hits. Sorry, Patrick. I forget that you spent a lot of money on that rebranding, which all you did was just re-added the Rick. <laughs> but I try and respect the like the like eight eight grand you spent on the rebrand. You know, it's like yeah. yes, sir. <laughs> it was eight. Come on. <laughs> um, it, it's very funny. You know, when I was a little kid, I didn't like Patrick at all. But it, like my teachers, that's what they called me, right? And then I thought I always thought that automatically. Well, it didn't matter if they were a good teacher or not. If they called me Pat, then I was like, that's, that's, that teacher's got it going on, right? So, like, th four, four letters missing suddenly. It's like, oh, man, you're amazing. And, uh, uh, and then when I was leaving the – I guess I was in business school. A couple cats there because I was always smiling and making jokes called me Happy. So that was my nickname in business school. And then uh, – um, Happy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then, and then when uh, I started playing, you know, playing my instrument again and going back out on the road, um, I, it was Patrick. But I mean, everybody in my family always calls me Patrick. Um, and uh, um, uh, and then when if people ever ask, uh, I always say, well, you know, my 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 family and my my close friends call me Patrick. I said, but it, honestly, it doesn't really matter. It, I I respond to both. And uh, but my favorite is like, hey, Patrick Sheridan. Oh, hey, Pat, nice to meet you. It's like you know, the automatic. <laughs> Hello, I've just we've just met. I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> I I have never introduced myself as Andy to a single person in my life ever in 40 almost 6 years. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people that call me Andy and I don't I don't really correct them. Um like a bunch of people that call me Andy. Never that's just that's not my name, but there was uh there I got two different uh I when I was teaching college, I was informal, just like Sam was. Like I, I didn't need like, you know, Mr. Hits is like is I saw somebody once call him uh, excuse me, Mr. Playfian, and he went he goes, Who, me? And like, yeah, and, I, and the and the kid was like, Yeah, and he's like, Mr. Palafian is a retired lawyer in Miami. What can I do for you? Yeah. So it's like, I'm Sam. Yeah. So um, but uh, but like two different students addressed me as Andy in emails. And so I like <laughs> so I went on like a on a diatribe like where you know and it was like look you need to pay attention to people like when when they say their name is susan don't call them susie don't call them Suze. just call them susan it just it shows you're paying attention you know this that whatever and it was like this long it was this long email and then i signed it cheers andy <laughs> just to see if they were paying attention <laughs> and nobody replied to it but in the next studio class they were they were all like what did what you know i was like did you guys like the email they're like we were all wondering so yeah i was like i gotta keep you people on your on your heels or else you'll eat me alive we couldn't figure you out <laughs> like i'm when in doubt i am uh i'm amusing myself so that's um you know in in general that's like that's a good so bud johnson wants to know why were you so happy in business school yeah i could grow, i don't know i could grow my hair i didn't have to carry a sousaphone <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go I, I was i was at that point still traumatized that was immediately following my my time in the in the arlington cemetery right softenest so uh but uh yeah that was uh it, it, it was one particular guy actually who always nicknamed people which actually i do frequently as well i can, my whole family is like my mom's name is diana but you know, her father nicknamed her Tookie, which so many people, like, she'll call for forever, having not talked to them for 30 years, and they'll pick up the phone, hey, Tookie, you know, so it's like <laughs> kind of a whole, I kind of like that around here, right? So, and then I nickname people, or I do exactly that, but not, not around them. Like, I know several people who's, we use, I use their full name when I see them, but when, when they're not there, it's, it's, it's always the, that, that kind of thing, i.e., you know, Sue's Jackie instead of whatever, you know, so, but, right. But I, it's just because of, I think the way I grew up every, I mean, I called my grandfather Bop. I called my grandmother Granin, right. My mom was Tookie. and was just, you know, it was like my father's name, nickname in high school was Stan and his name is Michael. Right? And that, that came from a teacher who was like, you know, uh, you know, uh, Michael Sheridan here. I'm Michael. Hey, nice to meet you, Stan. And he's like, no, it's, it's Michael. And he's like, I got you, Stan. And that's it. <laughs> like all the yearbooks say Stan Sheridan. This thing. So I don't know. I don't that's know. spectacular. So Andy, 
Yeah. <laughs> I went. Uh, I we call I, you purple actually because you know our first dog. You, when you were here, you you thought we said when we were saying Harpo, you thought we said purple. So you were we let you go for his, uh, quite a while actually calling him purple. So when you're not around, we just call you purple. I'm fine with that. Oh, I got lots of nicknames. Yeah, which uh, yeah, JD Shaw still calls me the hippie. So. Um, which is weird since I was like, I mean, I, I assume every other member of Boston Brass was always like, do we have the summer tour dates like sh like locked down yet? I need to put in a mail order for fish tickets. You know, it's like I I refuse to believe I was the only guy who was uh, who was constantly the only like, one asking that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm fine. I'll I'll miss any shows I got. It. But as soon as I put that ticket order in, like your tuba player is no longer available. Yeah. Like, that's it. We should treat that like, a you know, like we all had to cancel everything because of the birth of your kid. It's the same kind of thing. So it's not, but it is. Um, so. <laughs> So anyway, the uh, I man purple that was that uh, Harpo was awesome. What a great dog! He's a great dog. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your what is your new dog? I, I don't know how new your new dog is. Herbie. 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 He's, we've had him a little over a year and a half, and he's going to be two. He'll be two this summer. So there you go. Yeah, he's a he's a woodle. He's a Wheaton and a miniature poodle mix. There you so, go. Big pile of fur and <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> pretty much is a big pile of fur and sleeping that's uh that sounds like palafian in like the early 70s it's, so yeah i'm i'm told you know like you know pre annie album so um <clears throat> the by the way do you know the the annie album uh you know the the that the the album artwork on that is like photos but it's also cartoons like drawn around the photos and uh there was a little bit of a brouhaha within the band because on the back there was like um there were like um coming out of somebody's bell there was lines like you know that were showing like you know sound coming out of a bell but um but one of the trumpet players it might have been rolf thought it made it look like the lines were coming out of his butt so he thought that the album art made it look like he had just passed gas so he was he was very uh, upset, and Sam had to put out that fire. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, now I wasn't there, but Sam told me that story. So, yep, because I was commenting because he used to have it all up on his wall, and just every once in a while, you just you know get some small nugget of a story out of him that I had not procured in the the previous you know decade. So that was always fun. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. The Boston Fire Department didn't give him like an honorary helmet and a, and, a, and, a, and a coat when he left the band. You know, it's like, hey, thanks for putting out all the fires for all those years. <laughs> now that's funny. <clears throat> so you have got a. Um, I'm really, really, really excited about this. The uh, the brass gym. You're doing a five day online uh, clinic, June 14th to 18th. Give us, um, I want to give you a chance to plug it, but I also, I want you to actually tell us about each day quickly. Cause I think that the, the sequence is fascinating to me as a player and as a teacher, I'm super excited. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, I think the thing that, uh, you know, if you go to the gym and you work out, right. Um, and you just like come into the place to get a membership. Dude, where you, you where you at? No, I'm saying like, wait, do I look like I went? <laughs> Like I, go no, I, didn't say, I, didn't, I didn't mean you, you, I mean you out there, all right? You're like, and, uh, and, you're, are you, you're teaching a fourth grade and you're like, so you know how when you're like really in deep on making a sourdough, you know, loaf and like, you know, it's like you're analogizing the kids like, what is he talking about, mommy? You know, like, yeah. Uh, like first five notes, you know, man, when you're doing AP job <laughs> stuff, you know, when you're going to proctor the exam, it's like proctor, you said proctor, mom, what's proctor? <laughs> I'm sorry, Patrick. I'm going to let you finish this time. I think. Oh, you're fine. No, mostly. I, mean, I think the thing is, is that like, if you, it's the same in music. So if you go to the gym, you get a membership. There's a whole bunch of interval machines. You run through them. You get some benefit because you're, you know, not sitting on the couch with like ketchup in your belly button eat, <laughs> eating fries by the pound. Um, but it's not like there's going to be some sort of uh, 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 upper level where you're going to. Uh, you know, achieve some sort of peak performance. Um, so you use a trainer, right? And they, they tell you about each machine. They tell you about um, how to do them, what the form is. And they tell you the, the, the optimal sequence to gain X, Y, or Z result. Um, and so um, that's, I mean, that's kind of really how the, 
that morning routine that we used to do at ASU, at Tanglewood, at anywhere on the road that Sam was, um, uh, was about was sort of getting at some daily basics and kind of going back and forth between something that was, you know, very windful um, and smooth and then something that was, uh, you know, making the tongue become more coordinated. So um, it's kind of a, a similar thing here, which is, you know, we've all got textbooks on the shelf that that may or may not help us in a situation where we're trying to get better at something technical, whether it be range or smoothness or dynamics and um, or velocity. And so um, I'm that I'm going to use the brass gym as my textbook, but it's really a a a a, 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 a look into how I go about and and Sam went about uh, his daily basics routine. Right, I'm thinking the warm up's about that long, but the the, the basics thing it should be every day and then you just apply that to all of your musical situations so um i'm going to start on day one on monday everything's going to be at nine o'clock pacific which is nice and cool in the afternoon uh in england and at 6 p.m in Spain and in italy so everybody can sort of tune in um and uh and it, it, it'll be in an archive for those of you that'll be sleeping um in asia when this is going live uh but uh day one i'm going to just uh talk about sort of making sure that self-care is a part of your awareness when you're practicing in the practice room so sort of paying attention to the to what's in your head if we're going to get to a place where the music is the only thing flowing through our brain we have to we have to, we have to practice making sure that we're not practicing things like self-hate and judgment in the practice room so i'm going to talk about practice room laws basically uh i'm going to do some stuff about breathing and do some stuff about buzzing uh which is really for me ear work uh, and that'll be day one and with a little sort of a preview at the end of it uh, of what's going to happen the next day and then um, uh, so a chance for some questions, right? So about 75 minutes to delve into each one of those things, uh, 75 minutes a day. So day two is going to be all the flow exercises. So chromatics and smooth air movement and shawarma and beautiful sounds. And we'll talk about what, what, what we can get from each one of those, but what the main part of the form is for each and why it occurs where it occurs in the sequence and then day two will be about articulations and scales and a fun way to go about practicing those types of things um, is in the book but i'll also share some things that i do every day that aren't in the book um, that are just about coordinating your tongue and and making it feel like there's a way to continue to achieve um as a as a as uh, in velocity, wherever you might need it. So nice. I'm, still ch I'm still chasing all those types of things. I'm still trying to move the tempo up in every type of tonguing that I do, single, double, and triple. I'm still trying to play, you know, high <clears throat> every day with greater range up and down with greater ease um, and trying to make the, the, the ease of that carry towards, a, you know, louder dynamics and softer dynamics. So mm -hmm. the, it's a it's a constant chase. And if it's there are some things that need to be the same, like the practice of Tai Chi that doesn't really uh, change at all uh, day to day. And then there are things that 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 can be changed so that it doesn't feel mundane. And so I'll be sharing that all throughout the week. Thursday is going to be about all the, the stuff that pertains to brass instruments that uniquely in terms of overtones. Right. So bugling and then. Uh, those types of overtone slurs, Fle we call them flexibilities. That's a, I think it's an unfortunate name uh, uh, in terms of what that means to the amateur. But uh, right. it, it's the we'll talk about that um, during that part of the workshop. And then Friday we'll finish it all up by uh, sort of doing the routine that I do in my house every morning. Every morning for well, <clears throat> ever since Sam went to Miami, which was 2012, I think. Um, I've, Sounds about right. I I, I host a, a, a breathing and brass gym. Uh, it's like coffee's at 7.20 and 7.30 we get going and uh, uh, we breathe for about 15-20 minutes and then we do the brass gym till about 9 o'clock and the cats that are in the Phoenix Symphony get in the car during you know during a normal season and uh, run downtown for their 10 o'clock rehearsal and uh, for me it's a great thing to have because the nice thing about doing it with people is uh, the community of it the sort of the like hanging out by the you know the the water fountain at work kind of a thing where you sort of share a lot but it's also yep. the, it adds the the community of entering and exiting together and ensemble and intonation um so uh uh that's what we'll do friday is i'll have some some of the guys from the symphony <clears throat> with me and uh we're gonna do just do the routine like we normally do uh for an hour and a half um <clears throat> and with a little q a and then we're gonna meet later on friday afternoon at four o'clock Pacific, my time. So this will sort of, it'll be in the morning, I guess, for uh, mid-afternoon for 
folks in Asia and then uh, the, the Europeans. Well, the Spanish will just be going to tapas at that point. Um, and, and, look, at uh, you look at you flexing your time zone knowledge. <laughs> you know, it'd be super late. It's like 2, 2, 2, 2 a.m. for them. They're just like getting ready to eat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I love Spain. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. Oh, oh. And uh, we're gonna just going to do a hangout kind of like this with everybody and do a, a, a Q&A and a wrap up about what went well and what we need to be talking about going for the future. So it's uh, it's yeah, awesome. We're going to use the brass gym as a template, but really it's a, you know, it's just like this is how I practice every day. And that's <laughs> which is which is, you know, you can use it for anything. Use it for the Arben book. Use it for the Blazovich book. Use it for how you would like to design your own basics routines and uh, whether you use our textbook or not and you and you get a free digital copy of if you come to the camp so you don't have to worry about picking it up so, so that's, that's awesome what i'm what i'm hoping for because you know when i go to use those other any kind of other brass or woodwind um method book or or etude book those are the types of the things that i think about when i do my basics routine are the things that i'm trying to implement when i'm playing any kind of manual like that or taking a student through the same sort of uh development process Right. And I'm, uh, I don't know if, uh, if Pat knows this yet, but I'm actually going to be on each day. I'm going to just be his hype man. So every once in a while, I'm just going to be like, yeah. And then, <laughs> then I'll, then I'll put the camera back off. It'd be perfect. <laughs> Many, gosh, this was 20, 21 years ago, 20 years ago. I was walking through Times Square and a, um, and a, a limo pulled up to the, to the curb right as I'm walking by. The door flies open. And uh, and Flavor Flav like jumps out of the limo, and like you can hear people in the limo who are screaming, and uh, and he like and he just kind of stands there, like you know, looking around for about thirty seconds, and then there was there was probably about like you know thirty or forty people around him within those thirty seconds, and then and then he just screamed Flavor Flav, and then he jumped back in the limo, and it peeled out. That was it. It was a very New York moment. So there for it. Yeah, well, and Times Square is something to avoid at absolutely all costs. Um, but I, I, yeah, it paid out that uh, <laughs> it paid out that night. So, yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was good stuff. Boy, I can't wait to. <clears throat> I think it's going to be great for you to talk that much in depth about um, about not just what you do and how you do it, but why you do it. I think that that's like where the real value is going to be, where it's just kind of you know, and I've. I'm lucky because I'm friends with you. So I've gotten to pick your brain about a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, not in this kind of an organized, like extended way. You know, I've never, I've never heard you talk about all this for over an hour for five straight days, um, you know, with like an end goal in mind and the whole thing. But, um, yeah, no, but yeah. Monday, Monday we'll breathe and we'll, we'll play every day at the, in, in the middle. And at the end, there'll be opportunities. I'll just put the click on and it's great and do what i've been doing so uh yeah I'm, I'm i'm excited for it i hope uh hope lots of people show up whether they've used the the, the textbook or not or if, and if they have <clears throat> i mean i've i've had several folks uh bud being one of them uh johnson uh that that have zoomed in throughout the course of the pandemic for the morning sessions and oh cool uh, you know, they're like some every once in a while somebody one of the guys in the room will ask me a question and i'll, I'll get off on a little bit of a thing that's pedagogical instead of talking about photography or bread um and or pickles right <laughs> and uh, uh and guys that have seen it for a lot like bud spent a whole week at a camp with me years and years ago um mm -hmm. well, yes i'll say the same thing even my wife says the same thing like man every time you sort of get into it i hear something new i hear something different so yeah uh, i hope people come hang out and uh yeah it'll be it'll be interactive with your instrument uh tuesday through friday and uh interactive with your lungs on monday that's awesome good stuff and patrick is joining me on inside the practice room on uh june 1st at 8 p.m eastern uh we are going to um which i'll throw the link in here um it's uh, this is this is new enough um i've been we've been talking about it i was like i should actually probably pin him down before we have this chat and so then i texted him like 10 minutes ago and then he didn't respond so then nine minutes ago i was like hey man where answer me don't big time me answer me um but uh but yeah it's uh, it's gonna be great uh, i i can't wait to to dig in so far there's been two um uh, jeff nelson the canadian brass and michael sachs the cleveland orchestra and both of them have, uh, I got an amazing, 
uh, amazing quote from uh, Catherine Williams, who is a horn player and who is a middle school band director. And she said that the uh, the Jeff Nelson one uh, fundamentally changed. I'm paraphrasing, but she basically said it fundamentally changed how she approaches practicing and how she has approached teaching practicing to her students and that they've all got like practicing journals like Jeff talked about, like in the thing. This was like three days later and they all had pretty, you know, it's like pretty cool. So um, like a lot of really actionable uh, advice and being able to, you know, because people don't play like Jeff Nelson and Michael Sachs and uh and patrick sheridan and i'm actually talking to a um to a concert mistress of a um of a of an orchestra here in the in the states um who's a, a fantastic teacher uh, there's like um uh, there's going to be a bunch more announced soon but you don't get to that level without like uh having a real clear idea of what you are trying to accomplish every day and so that's kind of where i thought the there was an opportunity was to be able to talk to people like you about the you know about how you approach uh and we're talking not just about yes it's nuts and bolts it's like how long do you practice how often like you know like do you plan it out do you do you plan it and stick to it you know do you time it or not time you know all that but then also just mindset stuff you know because there are days when I'm, I'm guessing it's easier to sound like the best possible version of Patrick Sheridan. And then there are other days when it's not as easy and, you know, you just, you, you learn how to deal with all those and keep things moving forward and stay positive and all that stuff. So, um, so I'm looking forward to having you on. Yeah. You put, I mean, you put bars on the windows on the inside. So when you throw your instrument at them, it doesn't hurt anybody on the outside. <laughs> you don't have to replace the glass. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I'm excited. I mean, I I dig the the people's ability to be able to access this kind of uh, uh, sharing with folks because that's the kind of thing that was always like you could hear about it in a workshop or a clinic somewhere live, but you would never actually got to to be there. So yeah, it'll be fun. I'll be downstairs in the studio and uh, have a tuba or something, you know, something made out of fruit roll ups in my hand. And, uh, <laughs> Well, I will do some of this basic stuff too, like maybe look at a piece of rep and then uh, look at some basic things and and uh, do a little talk and demo. Uh, I think would be fun because uh, yeah, it'd be great for the for the reality of it. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it, it'll be fun to it'll be fun to put all that in a like how long do we got? What do we got? for an hour? Uh, hour. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was uh, one thing that uh, that Michael Sachs, and by the way, all of the future ones, uh, except for the Pat one, because it's new enough, I haven't even put it up on Hits Academy yet, although I'm, I'm throwing the direct link in right now uh, to all the places where this chat is appearing right now. Um, but uh, all of the the um, the archived ones, as well as the upcoming ones, are all available at hits, hitsacademy.com. Um, the the uh, Sachs uh, practiced... Uh, Petrushka, which was actually uh, really, really cool. And the reason it was really cool was because like, I mean, like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't care about practicing the trumpet solo in Petrushka. I mean, because I've never played it. I'm uh, actually I, I'm sure I have played it on a trumpet at a party many years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, but but that but I've never, you know, I'm not a trumpet player, but how he broke it down and what he it was fascinating and it directly applied to everything that i do you know he was like outlining how he kind of distilled it down and what the actual hard parts and the hierarchy of it were and he played that and we're leaving out a bunch of notes and it was like kind of like you know goalpost to head for it was like really fascinating and then you could hear him like put it back together i mean he was obviously it was kind of like you know 10x time lapse uh you know film but he, he then put it back together again and it was just like it was like my brain was in the best way possible was racing about applying like directly what he was talking about with this trumpet solo I don't care about uh, to things that I, you know, just because I don't I don't have to play that well or I don't get called. No one expects me to play that well. So, um, yeah, you want to sell, you want Michael Sachs play, they'd call Michael Sachs. So, yeah, you don't call a tuba player. So although Pat could do it, but, you know, but you're a jerk. Um, the. Uh, I do love that you sent me many years ago, you sent me your, your ripping version of happy birthday on my birthday, but you don't actually, you don't, you don't speak and you don't say happy birthday to someone. So now I can send that to people and just conveniently like not. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> They're like, wow, you've been practicing handsomely. Like, yes. Yes, I, I have. That comes back to me. <laughs> I wonder if I'll recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh goodness! We were, we were having uh, we were my, we had 
some takeout and uh, we were having with my mom and we, you know, we, we were probably several glasses of fermented grape juice into the <laughs> evening. And then she's like, Hey, where's my shrimp sushi? And I was like, you ate that already. And she goes, Oh, I wonder how it was. <laughs> <laughs> that also sounds like Sam in the seventies, like pre Annie album. So yeah, there well, we go. That's gonna be my new response. I think every time I'm in an ensemble and the maestro's like, "Hey, can we have a little?" It was like, "Oh, oh man, I wonder how it was." <laughs> that's pretty good. So hey, you mentioned to me that you've been listening to some of the uh, Brass Junkies episodes lately. What ones have uh, stuck out to you? Well, I mean, we've never actually met. Uh, uh, but I'm a huge for, for forever since I could, you know, hear his recordings, uh, fan of, uh, Thomas Gonch. So I, I was, you've never met Gonch. Nope. No kidding. No, no. When, uh, when the band, when the, huh. when they were in the U S and, uh, uh, I was teaching at UCLA and the students, you know, did the whole thing and they sold out the whole Schoenberg hall when they came to UCLA. It was a super cool experience. I, I was, you know, typical. I was on the road somewhere else touring. So. Oh. I missed the only really I think the only chance I really had to for us to cross paths on the normal touring we're always we're either on opposite seasons right or we're I'm following them around right I'm like six or eight months behind them you two could have been separated at birth yeah, yeah. and those right, yeah. right at the very beginning gotch at home the very beginning of the pandemic I mean I, I sit here Saturday morning and you know put the thing on and repost it to Facebook and, and tune yeah. in see what was going to be and then week to week it was you know a new topic so i'm i'm a huge fan of his so i was yeah interested to, to hear the range of serious information as well as uh you know the, the flips the flip side of his uh duck dynasty <laughs> that he's got going on man. <laughs> it is it is hard uh, yeah speaking of which my hair is being like extra spectacular tonight i'm uh yeah well, look at that. That's that's good. I, I rarely ever look at it. Um, I'm getting my first like real haircut. Uh, I, I need to. Well, the problem is I'm now ready. Like I'm all vaccinated. Um, but yeah, I, I just need to schedule it. And I just haven't because <laughs> yeah. it's like that. I'm always like, I should do that. And then I do something else. <laughs> but it's it's getting very close to the length where it will annoy the crap out of me. And then I will very quickly. And then after like a year and a half, I'm going to call my yeah my uh, the woman who cuts my hair and be like can you fit me in, in like the next 45 minutes <laughs> she'll be like, <laughs> she'll be like first of all you're alive like second of all you live almost that far away so you need to leave like now like okay yeah sure i'll just i'll cancel this person who's been coming every month um the other, the other one that was most recent that you guys did that i just thought was superb was the nikki cash yeah uh, podcast that was that was awesome that was uh powerful it was very powerful and i'm always um having worked with <clears throat> folks that have a variety of issues uh with their embouchure or chops for whatever instrument they play um i'm always really uh happy or thankful i guess thankful is the better word uh when someone that's had a lot of trouble uh is willing to share their story that transparently you know that that clearly uh because yeah. uh, most of the folks that walk through the door still even though they know that you know they have a couple names that they've heard that have had whatever they have um they don't they don't have any idea that you know they're sometimes were played in an orchestra with them or or went to college with them or whatever and, or or even that like someone who's not uh in a professional capacity yet looks at the types of achievement that some of these folks have had from the various, pretty much every major orchestra, um, someone's had trouble. And, uh, so I was, I was really grateful that she was willing to share her story and you guys were, were awesome. You were awesome with her and, and about her. Uh, so I was, that was awesome. And it, and it was, you know, it's a, it was a huge pivot for, it's like, you know, you're seeing Robin Williams on stage doing stand up for forever. And then all of a sudden he appears as a serial killer, you know, and then, and then, <laughs> It was like, was that kind of flip from you and Lance? I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> Nothing junky about this. Anyway, I thought it was you know, kudos to, to you guys and, and uh, my virtual thanks to, to Nikki for, for, for her willingness to do that. That was awesome. 
Yeah, agreed. It really is. Um, I, uh, well, there are people who have opinions about absolutely everything, including things they shouldn't, but I would never have an opinion in anyone's direction ever that they should be more upfront about an injury or about difficulties or anything. I'm just really, like you just said, I'm just really appreciative when people, uh, Colin Williams, I don't know if you've heard that one with us from a number of years ago, and he obviously was able to come through, uh, you know, and and now sounds like Colin Williams still, um, but uh, but he's really, um, you know, I remember because I, I played in youth orchestra with Colin, so it was like, hey, want to have you on? He was like, great, this is going to be a blast. We did a bunch of stupid things together in high school, which we actually didn't talk about, but we knew it was going to be fun because we could remember those things and smile and then not share about them. Um, but uh, but then I was like, are you comfortable? And he was like, very comfortable. You know, he was like, let's see, we can talk as much as you want, which is always it's always a gift, you know. It's always uh, it's always a gift when people who are at the absolute top of the profession. Um, I don't know. Is this is this a classical music thing, or is it a music thing, or is it an art thing, or is it a human thing? Where in general, it's like you know the the default like way goes to like show no weakness, right? Like emotional, spiritual, physical. <laughs> you know, it's just like like nope. I'm Patrick Sheridan, and I sound like Patrick Sheridan always. And it's never. It's just this is what happens, you know. And it's like people rarely give a, a glimpse under the hood. Is that a classical thing, or is it or is it not just classical? I would. I mean, I I don't. I have not seen anybody firsthand but i know people only one degree of separation apart that know people with <clears throat> a variety of task specific dystonias that uh, affect you know small motor control about a lot of things like with their hands like you know watchmakers and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, crafts you know any, any sort of trade work that involves that type of of work um they have i mean i think a lot of times uh, i don't know if it's different actually at all so but you know the things that can appear later like a central tremor for example um are are would be that's not what i'm talking about but it's the the similar sort of thing where that the chops are your chops here or the chops this way right so so yeah i, I mean it's i think the most amount that we hear about is in is in the the folks that that had a profile uh in classical music i think is probably where we've seen it I, that's where my awareness is the most uh let me put it that way but i would i would i mean the number of people that i have met that are in community bands that for sure went through exactly the same thing but came back to another instrument you know what i mean where they, right. they were like oh i got to college and i was you know playing in the marching band and then well they, they, there's no attribution they just like just one day my, my lips wouldn't play the clarinet anymore Mm. Oh, that's terrible. Well, what are you doing here in Michelle's band now? This adult community band. Oh, well, you know, I picked up the trombone, you know, but when I was 62 and I was like, man, this is pretty fun. And then they, and they come play trombone and it's fine. Mm. Um, so um, I think it's the far more widespread than is there's any way to get a gauge for or any data for. Right. Uh, because a lot of people aren't there. It's not their pursuit um it's avocational right so it's like mm -hmm. oh it's not working out oh well okay and then they just come back to it sometime later that the, the draw of music brings them back and they come in a different way um and uh, that frequently works out i mean we, we saw this with toby hanks right it's, you know just playing bluegrass music and playing bass and jug and um, mm -hmm. and um you know was, there's no <clears throat> lot of musical ability it was just the chops that were the ones about the tuba weren't the were the ones that weren't working so right um uh you know, after the trauma of that started to subside, he, you know, his, the desire to make music still remained for him. So he was trying to find an outlet and, and, and did so out in Chautauqua. Sure. Uh, doing what he did. So it was pretty, it's pretty awesome. But uh, that, that, I, I, I would say it's hard to say that it's confined to that. I, I if, I, I wish there was a, a single variable or even two variables that we could sort of, with like only three or four things deep that we could, you know, pin this down on, but I don't, to my knowledge, it's not like that. So right. the, 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 you know, there are some experts that are great at it and the more folks that have, you know, suffered with it that are willing to share our, our, all, all the ways, all the ways, you know, I, I, I got it. I got something, got me, I got over it. Something got me. I found something else to do. Something mm -hmm. got me. I left. I came back. Played something else. Everything was fine. 
Um, yeah. Uh, or or and, and or the variety of those those types of things I think that would be some wonderful information for people that played it you know I don't know how you would track them other than via this and talking about it sure that have, uh, that, that have gone you know in in the direction like Nikki where they you know decided it was it was you know for whatever mm -hmm. reason they were gonna not pursue uh, music and right. uh, and so then uh, uh, wh what they're doing and you know, she talked about it a little bit, and it was like, you know, which was the message that I distilled from that. You know, if I was doing a video, I'd be putting underneath there. You know, like it's like there's just life after this. It's like you got yeah. a beautiful family and cool opportunities, and living in another beautiful place. And uh, she's still she's still laughing her ass off. You know, like she's still like got a, got a great giggle. So there's still for whatever darkness remains for for her and those those like her. There's was a beautiful example of being able to concentrate on things that brought her joy. So yeah, what I found, found so spectacular about her willingness to talk. She's a, she is a quality human. My goodness. Yeah. She's, she always has been. So, um, I say always since, since I met her. So, which was a while ago at this point, because, <laughs> because I'm old, the somebody, somebody pointed out, uh, to me that, uh, that, that we are, uh, and I, so I posted this to Facebook just to upset other people. Cause this upset me that we are, uh, cause that seemed like the thing to do that we're closer to 2050 than we are to 1990. <laughs> just like, seemed like, and also I was born in 75 and like to somebody pointed out, like, how much closer I was born to the end of World War II than I was to now, which is like, <laughs> it's just like, if somebody's like 10 years younger than me, then yeah, it's only 20 years, but you know, 30 years, it's like World War II is like a, when we studied that in school, that was a long time ago. And now I'm like, oh, but it's been even longer since I was born. Then it's like, it all starts to, yeah, it all starts well, to kind of like, you know, this weird kind of consciousness, right? Like my, I, I don't just like snippets of things that I remember from reality, but like the, the, the running play from I was born in 1968, right? The parents were in grad school at, at UCLA. Um, and uh, um, so to be, you know, showing up in the world where then by the time I was conscious enough to remember, you know, TV, and there was already a sitcom about World War II, Hogan's Heroes. There was a sitcom about the Korean War, MASH, right? And then there were starting to be these uh, reality depictions, Apocalypse Now, uh, of the Vietnam War, which was ending when I was an in, you know, as a kid, and then, uh, you know, then living next door and down the street from a variety of veterans that uh, suffered a variety of traumas from that. So it was like this weird play of things. And then it's like, because of where we're directed in the media, it's, it seems like it's way in the background, even though it's not yeah. uh, 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 of, 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 you know, the last 20 years. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was like, you know, that we, those, those wars weren't that long ago and there were full blown, like, you know, let's, let's, you know, look at it through the eye of a sitcom. So it's not so horrific what we and they and everybody did you know so yeah pretty wild and it, John it's like from tom and jerry right into hogan's heroes for me in my brain you know it's like um, it's like a cat and a mouse chasing each other to, uh, trying to hide into in, in a tree stump from the <laughs> um jo jonathan dorn says love your playing and humor he might be talking to me but i think he's talking to you i'm pretty sure he's talking to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank uh, you, yeah Jonathan. i'm uh humor is i'm glad you think it's funny glad the <laughs> the and uh let's see here ellen uh well ellen uh said a lot so um she she says that you and gonch need to uh need to meet because it would be epic musical genius smart asses unite oh man oh. I, I, mean, I would love to play sousaphone for him in the back of a you know, yeah a jazz group that would be That'd be an honor. It would be yeah. Honor. He's just, he's a creative force. Like he's just like, and it's pretty cool that we get to, well, it's like the things, you know, one of the big things I say, uh, you know, say about Sam is like, it's so cool that we get to claim him as tuba players, you know, it's like our brass players that that, like, that guy with that much going on. is like one of us. And it's like, yeah, Gonch, it's like, it's cool that he's a brass player because, uh, you know, he could easily be playing a different instrument. You know, he could easily be a conductor or, um, 
uh, you know, flute player, a violin or uh, whatever, you know, electric guitar, uh, you know, uh, keyboards, whatever. Yeah, but he's one of us, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, yep. direct connect of his imagination to his chops is, <laughs> is, is a beautiful thing. And it's a direct pathway because it, when, it, yeah. when, when, it, when he's playing, it's beautiful. You know, it, looks, yep. it just looks, it looks, you, can hit play, you know, hit mute and just watch it. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah, it's, it's like there's no... There's no operation manual happening when he's playing. He's just letting out the tune that's right there in his brain. It's awesome to see. Yeah. And I didn't know, I knew, I knew there was music in his family, but I didn't realize that his brother was, before that interview, I didn't realize his brother was principal trumpet at Vienna for 25 years. It's like, I didn't, I didn't realize it was like that heavy, you know, it's like, wow. Okay. Yeah. There, there you have it. So. Yeah. Whether it's nature or nurture, if I'm one of those parents, I'm like, yeah, I'd like, I'll take, I'll take credit. <laughs> like, so, I mean, isn't there a street in Vienna with his name on it, Hans Gatch? Isn't that? Is that I, there could be. There, like yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Dude, how does that happen, right? Like, the family were two brothers and they're both like, what? Trumpet players? <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Like, yes. Only, I mean, only thing would be like twins that played the drum set, right? Then it would be <laughs> the only thing been louder in your house when they were little kids. Well, we got Chris and Michael Martin right now, which is also like that's the American version where it's just like, yeah, how did how did this happen? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, there you go, Patrick. Good stuff. So the Brass Gym uh, online, June 14th to 18th. Um, yeah, uh, dig it. Um, you can go to PatrickSheridan.com um, and uh, the link is um, is all the places where this is. Uh, yep is uh is appearing uh he's running a, a coupon too um a coupon um the uh yeah there ain't no q in coupon and niche doesn't uh, niche does not rhyme with uh, the word for a female dog either um so uh it's 50 dollars off uh if you uh, use the the uh, offer code brass gym see that you're you're so creative and then like you're the coupon code is like the most predictable thing ever it's like totally not creative he put every ounce of creativity into the actual presentation so um and uh and also patrick's going to join me on uh, hits academy's latest uh, inside the practice room which is going to be june 1st uh and also demandre thurman um, um uh, may this is may right yes may 23rd uh oh, at a uh, yeah that's uh very soon so yeah that that one is in like what that's a week yeah it's going to be it is in seven days and uh, 17 minutes. So it's going to like this hang next week is going to lead right into my session with Demandre, which is going to be uh, awesome. That's so. going to be awesome. I wonder, I would, like, yeah. the question should be like, what kind of compressor do you use, Demandre, to squeeze that massive sound into a digital format? Uh, ah, it's like, what a, what a, like, whoa, when, it, when he plays. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I can't, uh, and I, I know that he, He's a very thoughtful practicer. He's not one of those like I'm just going to put in six hours a day and then play really well. He's he's very he's very thoughtful about it. So when I approached him about this, um, when I explained the concept and was like, "Are you down?" and he when he wrote, "Yeah," he said, "That sounds really interesting," which was cool because like he's he's a busy dude and we're good friends. So generally, it's like you know if I have a question, he'll just be like, "Yes," you know. There's like not a lot, you know. It's not it's not longhand, but the fact he said that sounds really interesting, I was like, "Excellent." Yeah, this is gonna be good. So, good. yep, you can learn uh, all about that. The link there is at uh, hitsacademy.com, and the link to the, to Pat's will be up there either later tonight or tomorrow, but the direct link is, um, is in the chat here. And, uh, I think that that is it. I need to go and help get my little man who we just got back from Boston, uh, late last night. We cruised all the way from the Berkshires down to Virginia. We got seven miles away from our exit on the highway stopped, like put the car, put the van in park. So they were, there, there's construction and they just like shut it down and ways didn't even pick it up because it was we were right next to it like they they shut it down like three minutes before like if we had just gone a little faster at like the one of the two stops we made we would have gotten through but um but anyway he was a he was a trooper and the dog just kept sleeping because she's 10 and she's just um yeah anyway um yeah but we're home but i this is his metro area this is this is his first. Uh, this is his first like normal night home in like nine nights. So I got to go and uh, and lend a hand in case things are going sideways. So yeah. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Patrick Sheridan. Yeah, Pleasure. Patrick Sheridan. And uh, all right, and, and 
That is <laughs> yes, yes. Please hold your applause for the end. Oh wait, no, you were you you weren't doing that. This is the end. It was just that no one was applauding. <laughs> There's a, there's a fine line there. So anyway, all right. Thank you everyone uh, for listening. And we-